If you look around my office, you might realize I have kind of a love for dark, twisted cartoons. And a lot of that may be because I grew up with a lot of dark, twisted cartoons. Now, I'm not talking about the ones like Batman or ones that were meant for older kids. I'm talking about the ones that were meant for little, little kids, and they probably should have been made for little, little kids. And I loved the hell out of them. I enjoyed how much they scared me. I loved how every time you got through one, you felt a little tougher. So I'm doing a series reacting and reviewing them. We're gonna analyze how creative they are, how dark they are, and if the dark twisted tone was warranted. So join me in taking a look at some dark tunes. <laughs> what kid today doesn't love talking about Vincent Price? What kid today even knows who Vincent Price is? Vincent was released in 1982 and was Tim Burton's first stop motion short. I have a soft spot for Tim Burton and stop motion, so naturally I love this. Let's take a look. So a little background, Tim Burton was working as an animator at Disney and didn't really like his work there. He tried doing more dark, twisted stuff, but they put him on things like Fox and the Hound. But these two executives saw his talent and kind of wanted to cut him a break, so they told him to go ahead and make this short that was based on a kid's book which I don't think would sell very well, so he just turned it into a short. <laughs> about a boy who fantasized about being Vincent Price. And a lot of people say it was shown before Fly the Navigator, but I saw that when I was a kid, and I would have remembered this. So I didn't see it there. Apparently it was ran before a movie called Tex, a Disney film that vanished very quickly, and I never heard of it either, but the short still survived because Tim Burton became so popular. For a boy his age, he's considered it a nice but he wants to be just like Vincent Price. And naturally, for those who don't know, Vincent Price was a classic actor who uh, younger audiences might remember as Radigan in The Great Mouse Detective. He was in a lot of gothic horror films and hammer horror films, uh, usually ones that were based on Edgar Allan Poe, like The Raven and The Pit and the Pendulum. He was the narrator in Thriller. House of Wax was another famous film he did. He did a lot of commercials. Tylex, it makes a monstrous job easy. <laughs> and Tim Burton got to work with him as the inventor in Edward Scissorhands. And Tim Burton looked up to him like crazy. I mean, he was his hero. So he wrote this short and was lucky enough to actually give Vincent Price and they actually formed a strong friendship uh, after shooting this. He doesn't mind living with his sister, dog and cats. I love that sister. In fact, uh, Tim Burton did the designs for a Brad Bird short called Family Dog and it looks very much like the design of the sister there. Though he'd rather share a home with spiders and bats. You'll notice even though this is all focused around uh, Vincent Price's movies, the style is very German expressionism, like the uh, cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which if you haven't seen that, you, you got some homework, man. Oh, oh, you got some homework. So the shadows and angles are very crooked and exaggerated and sharp and threatening. And of course the design of the characters with the big eyes and the dark circles under them and usually the small uh, mouth uh, messed up hair. That's something that uh, existed before this, but Tim Burton very much popularized. All his characters looked like that. Keep in mind the budget for this was not that much considering a Disney stop motion production. It was about $60,000 and they really tried their best to utilize what they could. And thankfully, uh, because the style is so dark, anything that wasn't looking good, they could just hide in shadow. <laughs> a common phrase said among uh, comic book artists, particularly uh, I heard it from Frank Miller, is when in doubt, black it out. Keep it simple, keep it dramatic. There he could reflect on the horrors he's invented and wander dark hallways of low men torment. All of these are send up to Vincent Price movies and one of the common visuals you would see is Vincent Price feeling destroyed, whether it's uh, to get the movie going because something bad happened to him, he's gonna get revenge, or it's him learning at the end that what he was doing was wrong and he should have played God. Everything's falling apart. A constant but fun cliche. Vincent is nice when his aunt comes to see him, but imagines dipping her in wax for his wax museum. Clearly a nod to House of Wax, and uh, of course you never see the adults uh, very much like Peanuts, because to a kid, the adults don't play that big a part. <laughs> I think it also saved on time as you didn't have to time out what they're saying to the lip movements. If they're just off screen, it doesn't matter. You just move the hands and you can connect it later. He likes to experiment on his dog, Abercrombie. You can see here a little inspiration for uh, Frank and Weenie, which funny enough started off as a live action short and then turned into a stop motion film. Usually it's the other way around. 
Sometimes the lighting is a little off, like there's some moments where I know you're supposed to see it a little better, but then there's times where it's just perfect like that. Just what a beautifully composed shot. Such horrible news he could not survive, for his beautiful wife had been buried alive. Unaware that her grave was his mother's flower bed. Now that's tricky to do in stop motion. You have to light it so that you can make out, you know, the shovel and the ground and the background's completely black. But then slowly as you're moving the character, the light has to come back, has to turn bright. And you have to make sure that both in the dark and in the light, it's going to look okay. You know, while you're still moving the shovel and the character's walking in. So it's tricky, but it looks really good. His mother sent Vincent off to his room. He knew he'd been banished to the Tower of Doom. Now look at that. That is disgustingly simple. Just a flat cut out, just black, white, and gray, no colors or anything, but super dramatic. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. I mean, that is a striking image where he was sentenced to spend the rest of his life. Same thing here, very simple shapes, but depending on where you put uh, your focal point, you know, Vincent at the bottom there, uh, it can just look gigantic, it can look huge, it can look uh, so menacing, so massive, so sad. Which of course just makes it funnier because the kid's just being punished. <laughs> Yet he's imagining it's about the death of his wife. Alone with the portrait of his beautiful wife. I can't confirm it, but I would be shocked if that wasn't drawn by Burton. That looks exactly like his style. You're not possessed, and you're not almost dead. These games that you play are all in your head. So the textures on the mother and even the body of Vincent, you'll see that's kind of where they save money. Uh, you see in later productions that Burton would work on with stop motion, like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and Corpse Bride, uh, the textures on the skin are, are much better looking. Uh, this is just something that's much more simple so it can bend, but it also looks very wrinkly. And even when Vincent talks, uh, you don't see any teeth inside or a tongue or it doesn't even look dark. But you're so distracted by the visuals of everything else, if you don't notice it, or even if you do, you don't care. If anything, it adds to the oddness of it. Her anger now spent, she walked out through the hall, and while Vincent backed slowly against the wall... What I always found funny about this climax, if you will, this is technically the climax of the short, um, is that nothing's really going on, it's just the kid pretending more, but they're making it seem so much more dramatic, and the lighting, and the creatures, and everything. It's just a kid playing make-believe, and at the end of the short, that's all you watch. Yet I've known people who have, like, interpreted this, like, you know, the kid actually does go insane, or, like, somehow dies at the end, because it's just so dramatic, and I... That's not what I got. I just got it's the kid really, really taking his make-believe very seriously. I don't know. I, I think that's kind of a testament to it that so many people just get so sucked in they can think something more dramatic happened. But that that's not what I got out of it. Swept his mad laughter to terrified screams. Now, I believe what they do here to get the effect that makes it look like you're going inside Vincent's mouth is that they have the original... Uh, uh, model for Vincent, you know, which again, the mouth can't move that much. Uh, and maybe they made one or two other models where the mouth can be a little bigger, but then they just add more clay on him. So the mouth will get larger and larger and all they have to do, I mean, because you can't see in the center, uh, you just make the inside dark and you just put a bunch of uh, dark clay over it. So you have him, you know, maybe two or three models of the mouth starting to get big and then you just keep adding clay uh, for the mouth to make it look larger and larger and get it closer to the camera. So while it looks like he's screaming and the camera's going into his mouth, all that's really happening is they're adding more clay to make the mouth seem uh, bigger. To escape the badness, he reached for the door. Another simple image, but man, it just looks so massive. Trying to create a fisheye lens where everything looks uh, distorted and rounded, but again, it doesn't have to be exact, because you can see the door doesn't quite match that angle exactly. It's a little wobbly, but it's... You can do that because it's animation. It doesn't have to be exact. And my soul that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. So there you go. That'll get the kids laughing. <laughs> Uh, apparently when they screened this, uh, for kids, they didn't know what to think of it, <laughs> understandably so, uh, but, uh, a lot of adults did get into it, particularly, you know, artsy dorks like myself, <laughs> like, just really, really got into the visuals, and they did, uh, put it in a few competitions, and it did win a few awards. I think this is a very charming short. I think it's darkness 
is not even really that dark in terms of the story, uh, because it is just a kid make-believing, and that's really about it. It doesn't even have much of a beginning, middle, and end. Back then, maybe it was seen as more macabre, because you didn't see stuff like that, but nowadays, this sort of thing is everywhere. Uh, the, the sort of, I guess you would call it goth style, or, or, or really, it's a style that Tim Burton, I think, really has helped uh, shape. You know, people call it uh, gothic or, or goth, but I mean, that style has existed for a while, but this very distinct look... I think he, while you could argue whether or not he originated it, uh, he definitely made it popular. He brought it into the forefront. And I kind of like, for such a dark look, the story and characters are not particularly dark. It's actually a very cute story. Uh, but it's a cute story, I guess, to people that like dark stuff, that like this shit. <laughs> uh, you know, because nothing really that menacing is happening. It, it, it's suggested in his imagination, but I mean, nothing gory is shown. I mean, nothing really happens to the characters, and they make it very clear that it's all imaginary. I think particularly now, not only is this style very popular, but this idea of kind of the weird little kid that fantasizes being other things. Uh, now, kid fantasizing stuff has been you know, done since the dawn of time, but I think fantasizing kind of this dark stuff of uh, mad scientists and being the, you know, angsty loner, you know, leaning against the dark walls and stuff like that. Uh, I think that's very popular now, and I think when this was made, it really wasn't, uh, but this was... <sighs> This was definitely tapping into something that was about to become a lot bigger. I think it's a very fun short. If you've seen it, let me know what you think. I think they had it on the Nightmare Before Christmas uh, DVD, maybe even the Blu-ray. And it it's gaining traction over the years. Uh, you know, not only just because it's a Tim Burton short, but because I think it is very stylized and in... A dark, weird way, it's very cute. So let me know what you think if you've ever seen it, uh, because I just really, really enjoy it. Hey everyone, I got a couple of these lined up. If there's any particular cartoon you want me to look at as being very dark or twisted, leave it in the comments below. Again, I'm not really looking for movie scenes or cartoons meant for teenagers or older. I'm talking about ones meant for little kids, but still scare the shit out of you. Whether it's an old cartoon or a new cartoon, let me know what you want me to look at. <laughs>